Well, is it possible that I've misjudged the 357 Magnum carbine and its capabilities as a hunting rifle? I don't know, but if you'll stick around just a minute, we'll find out together. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And the adventure today is me finding out, us together maybe, whether or not I have misjudged the capabilities of the 357 Magnum carbine combination when it comes to a short range deer getter. And so I've got uh, four different loads that we're gonna look at today, two factory loads and uh, two hand loads that we're gonna consider. We're gonna do a little bit of quick work like I've done in the past with the uh, chronograph. We'll just blow through some numbers real quick so you know what we're dealing with. And then I'm gonna break out the ballistic gel and we're gonna see uh, test penetration because that's always been my concern about the uh, 357 Magnum cartridge is um, under ideal conditions, yes, it's, 357 Magnum would be fine on medium-sized deer, I would say, but, um, but on less than ideal conditions, uh, wrong at bad angles, things like that, I uh, just have always wondered whether or not the 357 Magnum was really adequate. So we're gonna look and see if some of the new information that I have might have changed my mind. And I want to thank a viewer of mine. His name is Brad. He emailed me with some load development that he had done based on a 180 grain cast bullet. Got me to thinking. We had quite a bit of back and forth. He had done a lot of homework. Then uh, based on his research, I did my own, put together my own hand loads. And uh, just like Brad, I was impressed with what I found. But we do have four different types of ammo that we're going to shoot. One is gonna be, because I think weight is one of the issues um, that you have with a 357 Magnum. And so here's a 180 grain XTP bullet from Hornady. And then another one we're gonna look at, and this is the load that we, that uh, Brad developed, and it's the one I have worked up as well. And it's based on a cast performance, 180 grain jacketed, or 180 grain wide flat nose gas check bullet, hard cast. So we'll take a look at that. But we've also got some borns, borns, some Barnes Vortex. It is the um, uh, 357 Magnum, 140 grain XPB hollow point. It's a solid copper bullet. And uh, we'll take a look at that. And then the last one is the Buffalo Bore Heavy 357 Magnum Outdoorsman. It's um, topped with 180 grain hard cast, uh, long flat nose gas check bullet as well. So uh, this one right here, we have seen, we have looked at both of these on the channel before. Maybe my eyes were wide shut uh, when I looked at those before. But anyway, let's get started with just a little bit of chronograph work real quick. And um, just so you know what we're dealing with. The Hornady 180 grain jacketed hollow point, the XTP, uh, the average velocity was 1589, and that was a maximum load of W296. And uh, the, the maximum velocity range for that particular bullet is 1700 feet per second. And so we were um, just 100 feet per second away from exceeding its design capabilities. But it had a, that load had a great extreme spread of 15 feet, uh, feet per second, a standard deviation of 10, so that was pretty good. Then my hand loads here with the 180 grain hard cast bullet with little gunpowder, the one that started the whole discussion with Brad, had an average velocity of 1783, an extreme spread of 35 feet per second and a standard deviation of 17.3. So uh, not the best, but we are talking about a short range deer cartridge. And then the Buffalo Bar Outdoorsman had an average velocity of 1827, an extreme spread of nine. I'd love to know what powder they're using and a standard deviation of 4.8. And so that 180 grain hard cast bullet from Buffalo Boar is quite the pill. And then the last one we shot was the Barnes 140 grain XPB 
and uh, average velocity of 1878, an extreme spread of nine, and a standard deviation of 4.6. So if I was to take anything away from this, I would say that the little gunpowder is not giving me at, at that load, which is absolutely bumping up against maximum, is not giving me a good extreme spread. Well, that guy was about to assign all of the blame for the extreme spread standard deviation to the little gunpowder. And um, what he didn't know was that the brass that he chose, don't ask me why he picked range brass for those particular loads, but that range brass had a terrible problem with enlarged primer uh, uh, flash holes, off-centered flash holes. It was just a mess. And, um, and, the, and he chose for the Hornady hand loads with the 180 grain XTP, he chose a brand new Starline brass. Go figure. So anyway, we can't say how much of that uh, enlarged um, standard deviation extreme spread was due to the flash holes and how much was due to the little gunpowder. I'll um, rebuild those loads someday with uh, some brand new brass. We'll see what it does to those numbers. But right now, let's let that guy get back to the video. But uh, we're going to do some more shooting with those rounds. We'll see if I can get them onto these uh, smaller plates. And um, is it decent accuracy? So uh, with that said, let's do a little bit of shooting with those hand loads and, the, uh, and also the barns and the uh, buffalo bore. Okay, I can live with that. Now let's shoot the 180 grain hard cast bullet. This is the cast performance hand load. Oh, I missed a couple of them there because it's shooting. This one's shooting high, but uh, wow, it really thumps. It thumps the shoulder. It also thumps those targets down range. Let me put one more in there and bust a jug if I can hit it. All right. Rookie mistake. <laughs> the splatter from one of those shots took out both a can and a jug. <laughs> All right, here we go. These are the Barnes 140 grain XPPs. These guys here were the fastest of all the rounds that we tested. I'm gonna start with that jug. All right, I like it. So this bullet right here is the Buffalo Bore Outdoorsman, 180 grain long flat nose bullet. And this is my hand load with the Cast Performance 180 grain wide flat nose bullet. There's a little bit different profile there, but look how much different the crimp is. This is a much stronger crimp on the Buffalo Bore round than on mine. This is what we're going to shoot right now. This is a nice one. Wow, that's a lot of punch. All right, let's uh, set up the ballistic gel and uh, see how these guys actually perform. But I would say this, 
from a um, from an accuracy perspective, that's uh, certainly minute of deer on all of these rounds. Okay, it's a day later. The humidity is thick enough you can cut it with a knife and it's hot. But the gel is set up right over there. I've got two blocks, you'll see it. I'm gonna give you a pass through, but I've got uh, 32 inches of clean gel. I've got two more blocks set sideways, so that's another foot of gel. And then I've got some logs behind there. So hopefully we'll catch all of these bullets. I really want to see what kind of expansion we get with the two uh, to the two hard cast bullets because I think they're going to go through both uh, both of the first two gel blocks, but we'll see. Well, that was, um, that was interesting. I did get three shots on camera and uh, the, the um, cast performance hand load at 1800 plus feet per second, I'm sorry, it was at 1789 or something like that. Um, it uh, didn't record, but as I said, it went through 48 inches. It went through eight, uh, 16 and 16 is 32 plus the 12, 48 and stuck in the, um, stuck in the first log or in a log. And, uh, and then the, the barns, or sorry, the, uh, the Buffalo Boar Outdoorsman, the heavy 357 Magnum, 180 grain, wide, uh, long flat nose versus the wide flat nose. I'll tell, I've got more to say about that here in just a second. But it also penetrated all the way through, like I said before. And I'll try to dig those out. Hopefully I can show them to you once we're done here filming and I'll split all that up and I'll show it to you at the end if I can find those two bullets. Um, but that wide flat nose bullet, the cast performance bullet, it did give me a little bit of trouble cycling here in this Moroku Winchester 1892. And I've really said very little about the gun because it's more about the cartridge than the gun. But this is the 1892 Moroku Winchester is my favorite pistol caliber lever gun, at least until Marlin introduces the 1894, which I hope is soon. But as far as good looks looks go and quality, you can't beat the Moroku Winchester. The chamber is just a little bit, I'll say tight. Even my 44 Magnum, it can't chamber the wide flat nose 260 grain bullets from, from Montana Bullet Works. So, uh, so, but then we have the, then we have the, um, the uh, Barnes XPB hollow point bullet. Uh, it, uh, it did way better than I thought. Uh, my goodness, we got 20, uh, 26 and a half inches of penetration. I believe that's what you'll see here. And, um, and a pretty good initial, uh, uh, initial explosion. Now, these are all at handgun, we'll call them handgun velocities below 2200 feet per second. And so we're not gonna get that catastrophic, um, whatever you wanna call it, hydrostatic force, 
that uh, knocks a deer down DRT, you know, it just is not going to happen with a pistol caliber carbine unless you hit some major source of central nervous system pathway um, or uh, something like that. So, uh, so anyway, what we're looking for is deep penetration and a, a pretty decent wound cavity uh, to bleed out. And I think you got that with that Barnes bullet. I was surprised. And then the uh, Hornady 180 grain uh, XTP bullet, uh, better than I thought. The best expansion, I believe. You'll get to see the slow motion in detail before I do. But I think it got the most expansion and it penetrated 25, 25 inches, I believe. So uh, all four bullets uh, did well. The hard cast bullets, you either like them or you don't. Um, but they are certainly going to give you reliable penetration even if your angle is not just right on the deer. Um, but it is a pistol caliber carbine shooting a pistol caliber round and so you're never going to get um, you're never going to get uh, rifle um, performance out of those out of those rounds. What you just look for is reliable penetration uh, with a good wound channel and so I think uh, I think I'm going to have to walk back what I had said uh, some time ago, and um, that was um, just sort of uh, naysaying about the 357 Magnum carbine for deer hunting. I still don't think it's the best choice, but you know, sometimes we hunt with uh, rifles and handguns, some people even hunt with handguns, because they like doing it. And, um, and as long as they are careful with their ranges, and, um, and are skilled enough to place shots accurately and disciplined enough to stay away from those shots that, uh, that don't offer the best percentage of success, then, um, then it's a fine choice. But thanks for watching. Um, thank you very much, as a matter of fact. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.